Bible warns us in the book of 1st, 2nd Timothy chapter 3. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. This is being said to us as Christians, and this message is particularly for those of us who claim to be believers of Christ. It says, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful and proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, and without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Stern warning, which sometimes we use religion, we use cover-up, we use vain tradition to pretend that we are actually Christians. And yet the Bible tells us that's not what Christianity is. It's a dangerous thing. And through the years, you watch how Holy Week has unfolded. On the one hand, you've got Fat Tuesday. On the exact opposite, it says it has a form of godliness, but it's denying its power, and it says have nothing to do with these people. There is a form of godliness. The other extreme of Holy Week as we enter into is this idea of whipping oneself, of self-sacrifice, of making sure that you get enough pain to pay for your sins. And it's not just here in the Philippines. It's actually in various places in South America. These practices are happening. On the one end, you have the abuse of it. On the other hand, you have the, really the paying for my own debt, paying for my own Jews. And it becomes a one-week tradition. It's funny how we think that one-week life will change the rest of the year. It would be like saying, if I exercise One week in a year, I will be healthy for the whole year. How many of you know that's not right? If you say, I'm going to keep my food and my diet in check for one week and expect to be curbing my weight the rest of the year, that's that's, that's not going to work. If we're saying, I'm going to save money for a week to have all the money I need for a year, that still won't work. And it's similar to the way we treat Holy Week, where we set ourselves up with a tradition that lasts for a week rather than living the life that Christ had intended us to live as believers. Let's take a look at the book of Romans. Let's start with what Jesus did for us. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. First thing I want to point out, what did Jesus do do for me? What has he actually accomplished? The first thing it says here is that Christ was raised from the dead and he's no longer going to die again. This is important for you to understand. Regardless of who you are, regardless of how many vitamins you drink, regardless of all the Botox you're going to put in your face, regardless of how hard you exercise, there's a limit to this physical body. This body is subject to decay, and no matter who we are or where we are, no matter how old you are, at some point in time, we're going to 